Yes, indeed. Right. <laughs> this is our life. Yep. Well, and I don't have an intro for this because we just wrote it. So uh-huh. I guess welcome to the most excellent 80s movies podcast. Uh, it's the podcast where a filmmaker and a comedian and a minute by minute podcaster, uh, returning guest, Andy Nelson. Um, we are going to uh, voyage psychically into the mystic jungles of the 80s movies that we love and love to hate and hate to love and can't find anywhere until all of a sudden (laughs) (laughs) we find one in the library. Um, This movie, well, golly gosh, I'll just let you listen to the trailer and then we'll jump right into it. Uh, It is called Vibes. And this is our third movie in a row from 1988. Did you know that? No. Three in a row from 1988. Here's and the beginning of our inadvertent South American treasure hunt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Double feature. Columbia Pictures proudly presents Cindy Lauper in her motion picture debut as psychic Sylvia Piquel. Sylvia has a sixth sense. My psychic guy, Louise, says your girlfriend's playing bouncy bouncy with another guy. Trying to be as delicate as I can. Jeff Goldblum, as Nick, has a psychic touch. Oh, God, it's true. Nick, it's not what you think. Another man has been holding these panties. You know I can tell. And when you put them together, you can feel the vibes. Jerk! I had that guy eating out of my hand. Literally. Look! They're still melon! I'm sorry! Cindy Lauper, Jeff Goldblum, vibes the first psychic comedy. Feel it this summer at a theater near you, or you'll miss the fun. Right, Poopsie? That's right, Banana Head. The last psychic comedy, too? (laughs) Also, I think that's the (laughs) shortest trailer that we've ever had. Like, in a run of, like, really long trailers. That one was just like, it's her, it's this guy, there, and it's about psychics. That's all you need. (laughs) That was a really short trailer. Yeah. They didn't even mention Peter Falk. (laughs) And, like... Literally every other 80s character actor whose name you can't remember. Where you're like, oh, that guy. Oh, look, it's that kid. There's that lady. (laughs) A lot of people were in this movie. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm Chrissy. Uh, I am an improviser and comedian at National Comedy Theater. With me, as always. Uh, Nathan Blackwell, filmmaker, uh, man about town. And returning guest. Hello, it's me, Andy Nelson, yes. from the Next Real Film Podcast and the Marvel Movie Minute. Marvel Movie Minute, which just concluded, or is about to conclude. Well, we're still recording. I don't know when this is going to go live, but... Uh, Tomorrow. S- sooner <laughs> than we <laughs> realize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're at about minute 77. Oh, boy. <laughs> By the time this goes live. Yay. All right. And you yeah. should definitely listen to that Marvel Movie Minute. Super fun. Iron Man happening right now. Oh, yeah. Okay, we watched Vibes. So somehow, like early on, when I saw, well, someone suggested, you should see Vibes. Jeff Goldblum, Cindy Lauper play psychics. I, I said, yes, yes, we need to find this movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so Chrissy and I have been searching for this movie. Neither of us had seen it. No. What do we think? Oh, boy. <laughs> so Andy, you, Andy has seen I, it. I did this uh, Per the trailer, I, I felt it in the theaters in yep. 1988, mm-hmm. back in that summer. I <laughs> did go and see it. I, I you know, I remember it, I was the age for this, this sort of movie in, in 1988, and I enjoyed it. Um, I probably rented it after that and watched it a time or two, and then hadn't seen it or thought much of it since. Yeah. Until <laughs> now. Apparently nobody has, because this is a lost <laughs> movie. It's streaming nowhere. It's, like, really expensive to buy the DVD on Amazon. And, yeah, we had to wait for someone to find a copy in a library to be available to lend to us. Yeah. And and it was a burn disc with, yep. a, with a skipping section. Yes. <laughs> so, so much we valuable shall channel, exposition. We shall channel vibes for you so you gain that experience. Yeah. I liked it. It's it's cute. It's, it's very cute. It's slow. Yeah, and the pace there's is There's a wrong. lot of boringness. Yes. But it's definitely got a lot of charm. I think. And cuteness. I, yeah, maybe charm is not the right word. Cuteness is the Cute. word. It needed another Quirkiness. pass in the writing. Mm-hmm. And it needed another pass through in the editing. Yeah, they just needed to speed it. Like if you sped up the movie just a bit. Yeah. 
Okay. It's like Sorry. listening to a podcast when you put it on, on double <laughs> on speed. On double speed, <laughs> yes. Like, oh, okay. I can get through it at this speed. <laughs> uh, so it's about, I guess we start off in a thing that never becomes of any relevance at all, except for that Cindy Lauper and Jeff Goldblum meet mm-hmm. at a conference for psychics? A, a paranoia, a yeah, a paranoia yeah. activity center. Paranormal. Par- Paranormal. Par- 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 the paranoia <laughs> activity. Paranoia. <laughs> paranoia. <laughs> All right. Correcting um, my notes. And that uh, guy who is a sleazeball in like every 80s movie. What's, do we know his name? The blonde? Julian Sands. Julian Sands? That even sounds like a sleazeball <laughs> name. <laughs> He is like conducting the study and all the psychics are, they know each other and they're sort of competitive. Is that the impression you guys got? They, I, secretly, they want to be picked as the the best psychic among them. Mm-hmm. There's like eight of them or something. And each wants to, because they're all being kind of testing their abilities and seeing who's good at what. And they all want to kind of be the best. Sorry. So they're all kind of, they have different abilities right so cindy lopper sees this uh ghost psychic person louise Mm -hmm. who talks to her and can communicate with the dead or you know travel about into the next room and And, but does know the future as well (laughs) yeah it's it's a bit vague and then (laughs) (laughs) it's a bit broad and she can also astral project right right which comes in handy Jeff Goldblum's power is to touch something, and he can tell who else has touched it and where else it's been. Psychometry. But he can't, but yeah. he can't see the future. Right. He can only see the past of an object. Right. The history of an object. Right. Okay. That's. So they each beautiful. had their own abilities, because yeah. even the other people that that you kind of meet mm-hmm. at this little uh, you know psychic testing facility, they all do something different. Like one guy has telekinetic powers where he can kind of he's trying to move that cigarette the ashtray mm-hmm. so they each have something different so i feel like julian sands you know would say well they each could help because they all do different things yeah. it's like mm-hmm. it's building the team but he's like no 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 i only want you to i don't know but then nothing <laughs> ever happens again as far as we know until like <laughs> way later in the movie he's just like okay well goodbye <laughs> don't forget about me see you guys i'll later. be back in a in an hour and ten minutes. Yes. <laughs> and then the movie sort of becomes Romancing the Stone. <laughs> Spoiler for next episode. <laughs> right. Um, because Peter Falk right. shows up in Cindy Lauper's apartment. Yeah, he breaks eating, into Cindy Lauper's. Eating Lopper's. A, a dove bar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to convince her to go to Ecuador to find his missing son. So she invites Goldblum, who is mm-hmm. like... At his scarecrow finest in this. Like, <laughs> oh, he's just a quirky weirdo, and I love it. He's so it's fun. But he's like, he's really grown into himself. Like, he is way he's, hotter now he as is, an older uh, yeah. man. <laughs> and I'm just assuming you both agree with me. Um, and Cindy Lauper is so cute. Yeah. She's she is. just adorable. Jeff Goldblum and Cindy Lauper are just as good as you're hoping in this movie. Yeah. You get you get everything that you think you would get. You get full go bloom. One hundred percent, yes. Yeah. Get, yeah. Cindy Lauper turns out to be really good acting. A really she's, good actress. Yeah. She's great. She was so much fun to watch. She played well, and I think it helps that the role was something that was it, it feels very mm-hmm. written for her. Like mm-hmm. she she fits that role very nicely. And yeah. has a lot of fun with it, clearly. The only time and she's really I've good ever... with accents too. <laughs> <laughs> The only times I've ever seen her act, she's playing a psychic. What? Yeah. Uh, the only other things I've seen her act in are Mad About You, where she plays a psychic, and Bones, <laughs> really? where she plays a psychic. What a weird career trajectory. So is it, yeah. her, her filmography is not... Because she, she really didn't do that many... This was like her feature debut. Mm-hmm. And she really didn't do much in terms of features after this. Not much of, at least, no. that's on the radar. Because she wanted to, own, she was pigeonholed as psychics. Yeah, because <laughs> she's too cute and quirky and mm-hmm. unusual. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. If, no, she could never break out of that Madonna thing mm-hmm. where everybody just saw her as her persona. Yeah, 
But no, she's like really good. There's not like mm-hmm. any weak spots. Yeah, and and it's just I mean, she is giving all of herself to the role and just mm-hmm. has a lot of fun with it. And it's a fun role anyway, just the whole yeah. idea of the psychic and you know talking to Louise and you know channeling other spirits and everything. So I mean, it's it's a role that's designed to have fun with. And yes. you know, girls just want to have fun. They do. I did read that. Um, but I love everything she wears in this movie. It's so cute and fun. And, like, her hair is always wonderful. And she has, like, this frosty, like, mint green eyeshadow that's just, like, she was always an idol of mine growing up. And, <laughs> and like, I just want to wear all those clothes and, like, find a way to make my hair turn into straw so I can stick it up <laughs> like she does. I think you bleach it a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and then every aerosol, like she was doing nothing for the ozone layer. No. In 1980. No. She probably has a hole of her own up there. Yes. <laughs> it's the Cindy Lauper hole. She'll just she'll just elevate through it. Oh, also Steve Buscemi's in this movie in addition. Yeah, in a very early sighting of, of Steve Buscemi. <laughs> uh, Are you guys tracking that for the 80s? We are now. <laughs> the, the Buscemi <laughs> it's the first. It's the first appearance of a Steve Buscemi. Buscemi. I wonder if this was his first movie. Do you guys know? No. We yeah, check it's there. actually pronounced Buscemi, but <laughs> popular is Buscemi, so I'm just going with that because I want to be popular. Uh, it's, <laughs> 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 it's not his first film, but not his first he film. did do uh, 85, might, a few might years as well be. Mm. Um, yeah, but in So you've got a psychic team up. Psychic team up, and but she is like she's playing a character who is like even though she is psychic, she can't seem to like get a leg up. She's like dating sleazy Buscemi or Buscemi after sleazy Buscemi, uh, who just like use her and take advantage of her. The and Buscemi boys. Yes, <laughs> there's too many of them, and uh, she's uh, can't get anywhere. She's lonely. She's down on her luck. He is like. An overly, he's like that 80s neurotic. They're trying to make him that like 80s neurotic pre hipster. Mm-hmm. Like he's sort of a germaphobe. He's right. sort of like he works in a museum. I don't know. What did you guys think about his character? Yeah, very much in his head, very much. Mm-hmm. Um, you kind of have like the. The two pairings of the person who thinks too much and the person who doesn't think enough, mm-hmm. you know, and then pairing them up like the neurotic, like New York. I need, you know, uh, I need to bring my own psychiatrist. Food yeah, and exactly. Case full of water <laughs> to yeah. Ecuador, and that never comes up again. But that's fine. No, uh, it, it, no he does have. <laughs> <laughs> he does have at the dinner table, right when they go to happy hour, mm-hmm. right. One of those, um, like, fridge jugs that you would put in your fridge and, like, puncture, and then the water comes out, and he's just put, like, an umbrella in it. <laughs> just sitting on top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was very funny. I liked that quite a bit. There was some weird physical humor. <laughs> there really was. There was. There were a few moments of hands that were really funny, like when, when Jeff Goldblum and Julian Sands were, uh, when uh, they were leaving the, the study, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and Julian Sands chases Goldblum down to the taxi, <laughs> and <laughs> over the cab door, you know, it, Goldblum puts his hand down, and Julian puts his hand on top of it, and then Goldblum put his, puts his other hand on top of that, and then Sands put, and it just keeps going while they're having this conversation. <laughs> It was just such a strange thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and then there was also that great moment with uh, with Steve Buscemi, where Cindy <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lauper, we think he that that's her boyfriend. She's dating him. She even thinks that that's her boyfriend. And then his real girlfriend shows up, and he mm-hmm. tries to introduce them. He hand he basically has them <laughs> shake both of their hands, and neither of them are moving their hands. <laughs> so he's just wagging their hands in front of each other. There's a lot of like visual gags that are that are funny yeah they're funny but they they seem out of place like this movie couldn't decide if it was like an adventure movie or a ridiculous over-the-top comedy Mm -hmm. i think it should have leaned into the comedy more yeah i I, so this is um from uh, imagine entertainment ron howard's uh production company and then these writers are are dudes that he's worked with before like Mm -hmm. on splash and stuff like that so you kind of get that going but then you feel like that need and desire to also have like an action movie or an adventure movie, mm-hmm. and so like those, uh, I, you do kind of feel those competing energies because there's there's a lot of great lines and gags, and, yeah, and people a- are going for it. Like Peter Falk is is going for it. Yeah, yes, 
and there's the diet. There's a lot of really funny one liners, but also like they don't have quite the pace. Yeah, and it's. I mean, you mentioned Slash. If you picture, it's Tom missing Hanks, snap. Daryl Hannah, yeah. and John Candy in those three roles. I think it's a better movie. Like Goldblum and uh, Lopper and Falk are all like you could see picking them, but it just didn't a hundred percent work. It was almost I kind of feel like there's just not enough for them to do. Like they don't want to get to this place. Mm-hmm. So okay, so there's there's a bait and switch. So uh, Peter Falk is looking to help find his lost son in Ecuador. And so they they join up to help, and he's paying them fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. But then very early on, we realize he's actually after a treasure. He's right. looking for a lost city of gold, and they just don't want him very bad. And there's not a reason for them to do it. So everyone is kind of just doing. We're kind of floating in in kind of one scene after another until finally they want it a little bit, and the plot kind of gets going. And mm-hmm. but it, it's just there's not enough snap between like the stakes of what they want and how badly they want it. Yeah, they kind of hang around on the outskirts of town yeah. for a long time, right? <laughs> you know, Just like, killing people <laughs> right. here and there. And, you know, it's like if one person shows up and then another person shows up. And it's just, you know, we're never really getting anywhere. And, mm-hmm. and that's something I think with this sort of movie you really do want to have. And, I mean, I still had a really fun time with it because yeah. I, hadn't, I mm-hmm. hadn't seen it in ages, but it was pretty fun. But still, you get to this point where you've got these – you know, you're in Ecuador, you're up in the mountains, you know that it's just up the hill. You know, he's kind of already figured out. You just got to go that way and you'll it's come to it. down the crevasse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ultimately, like, the the obstacles from where they are in the hotel to getting to this this secret lost city is just walking to it. You know, it's just, yeah. it's like a slight travel. There's no, like, steps of of other obstacles other than everyone kind of fighting over who's in charge of this organization. Who's, who's going to yeah. give who finger waves in right. there. The, it's not like <laughs> there's, it's not like they get, they really get that lost. It's not like they have to overcome any like physical obstacles. Right. It's just, a, it's just the only challenge is that nobody really knows, you know, which path to take mm-hmm. and that's really it. And so they're just waiting on the psychic who can, you know, hold something and figure out where it came from mm. so that they can go uh, so that they can go oh it's that way let's follow yeah, him let's and, go that's, that way. and that's it like you're waiting for half the movie for them to do that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then they're like oh <laughs> here it is oh it's not the thing it's this other thing okay. right right yeah okay let's go back to the hotel yeah and I, <laughs> that was the part that I thought took the longest though was once once we reveal uh, that the blonde guy is really bad and the other psychic is bad and Carl who's like a local sleaze bag who's on the a bad local guy's hire. side yeah but right. he has a necklace that says Carl his <laughs> name is Carl and he's got a necklace that says Carl so he's the original Carrie mm-hmm. he's the Carrie of their group <laughs> blank stares I'm getting from you too um <laughs> and they're like they take so long to get into the fight that's going to end the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then once we're kind of towards the end, the jokes kind of stop happening. Mm -hmm. And then then they start happening again really quickly. Right. Like the parts (laughs) So it suddenly (laughs) becomes about the stakes, which really haven't been that important to us. But she, like, she astral projects out of her body to go say goodbye to Jeff Goldblum, and he has this funny moment where he's with Carl, and Carl's supposed to be, like, Getting, killing the bad him. guy. Killing him. <laughs> Minion number one. Yes. And he like has a conversation with the ghost of Cindy Lauper, I guess. And then he starts doing all these bits. Like after that, it's bits. <laughs> yeah. So um, it, they're, they're looking for this. Everyone's convinced it's a lost city of gold, or at least Peter Falk is. Mm-hmm. And, but the secret bad guys from the uh, paranormal activity center, mm-hmm. formerly the paranoia activity center, <laughs> Um, they know it's actually a, a, a city with like this psychic pyramid of power, right? <laughs> which is they, very vague. They didn't really explain that either. That like once you decoded it, it they made it seem like it was sort of like an Ark of the Covenant type thing, and you right. could just like control people. A, and the villain's right, yeah. motive is is one single sentence, which is 
the world shall now have more order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, eh, yeah, okay, okay yeah. very that works. Nazi-ish or yeah. something. <laughs> I'm not sure where but we're yeah, going with that. Yeah, and you don't really get a very evil vibe from him. No, he either. seemed He's really nice up front. He seemed okay. Yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> he just wanted everyone to like pick up after themselves. <laughs> he just hates it when people are late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it's funny, yeah, somebody who's, like, I, I don't know. I don't know why he's running the Psychic Institute if he's really just looking for, you know, more order he must, in his life. he must yeah. have had that job for a while until this pyramid thing came along, right? Like, uh, originally, this psychic thing was, like, exactly what he wanted to do, mm-hmm. you know, and he was totally happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> or reasonably happy this was the field he wanted to work in. So, So it sounds like... You know, well, and he knew who Harry was, Peter right. Falk's character. So it, it's almost like Doctor Jones and uh, what's his Belloc? name, Belloc. Yeah, you it's know, they they exactly both like they that. both are pursuing this thing. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, there's and, def- but he's put together this this pyramid scheme. Ah. Ooh. Ooh. trademark. <laughs> it's the original <laughs> MLM. Yeah, yeah, but you're right. It definitely had shades of. Um, Raiders, yeah. yeah, for sure. Of this, like this ragtag team going up against this more sophisticated, better equipped team. Right. Yeah, but it, yeah, it's really even more so romancing the stone of like mm-hmm. the love affair on the all the way to a South American adventure, mm-hmm. and then like the shifty kind of Peter Falk is kind of the Danny DeVito, yeah, and <laughs> then you've got the bad guys who are more ruthless. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, you know. What, Another element that sorry uh, that no, that is introduced and never they never do anything else with it and they could have is they introduce us to Elizabeth Pena's character oh yeah, yeah. Consuelo and she's like you'll never have it and she's trying she you know she initially is coming on to Jeff Goldblum's character mm-hmm. and then tries to kill him uh, after she's uh, seducing him in the bedroom. And uh, then it's a kind of funny <laughs> death scene. Like, really <laughs> it made me laugh quite a bit. But still, it's like it sets up this whole thing about, OK, here's another element. Oh, yeah, of yeah. This, this like it, these <laughs> people who are protecting this thing and they're trying like, to stop them. And then that's it. The like locals oh, yeah. who want to yeah. keep it. Safe. Right. He, he kills her or he thinks he killed her. And then he goes back and checks and she's gone. And we think, oh, maybe there's going to be something more with her because yep. she was interesting. She was interesting. And nope, there's <laughs> nothing more. Oh, she's gone. She's gone. But I, I loved her. So they're really, Katie's so they're very. The, these bad guys are really sophisticated, and they could just disappear a body in a matter of seconds. <laughs> they're no, they're dumb. These guys are dumb. When we meet them, they never do anything that sophisticated no, or magical. They don't. They don't. I think that there were there had to be some script changes yeah. or some editing problems or something because mm-hmm. I was like uh, that was a that was an interesting element that gets set up and nothing is ever done with it. Right, and mm-hmm. it would have been so good for there to be an element of like the local people, almost like Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, who like their job is to keep it safe and keep it out of enemy hands. Yeah, so he right, at least right, introduced right. the idea of this psychic power mm-hmm. that's earlier than five minutes before the ending of the movie. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, they needed like Carrie Fisher to do a pass and just mm-hmm. like either make it way funnier <laughs> or way more adventurous or both, or even just explain some things. Yeah. Cause even at the beginning when we have the two, you know, the, you know, tomb Raider sorts of guys who, mm-hmm. who come across it. And one of them <laughs> from New Jersey, yeah, one of them gets <laughs> like blown up and, or, you know, disappears into the ether. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly know what happens to him. And his friend, uh, Michael Lerner's character, he kind of like, you know, he touches him and he kind of goes crazy as we find out later. But it's like, but what is it? Like, why Why <laughs> did all this happen? Like, give me a hint as to what is and happening. There's no hints at all. No, and it wasn't even like Cindy Lauper ends up touching it to, like, save Jeff Goldblum and, like, is theoretically absorbing its energy. And then in order to turn it off and save her life, her spirit guide, Louise, has to, like, jump into the light. Right? Is that what you guys think happened? But, like, there was no element of like, oh, she was worthy of yeah, right. the power because she didn't. Right. Or she, or we don't even know if she retained any of that power or if she was just. No longer psychic. Yeah. And there's like a button at the end of the movie <laughs> where, oh, and here's another thing that always bothers me about these like sort of halfway romantic comedies. And I think. I mean, I feel like it happened more in the 80s, but it's still something that that you do in, like, any sort of romantic B story today Mm -hmm. where it's, like, 
they're trying to achieve this will they or won't they sort of vibe so like she likes him at first when they meet at the place but he has a girlfriend and then they go to ecuador like she's flirting with him the whole time and then she goes into his tent Mm -hmm. and he's like you yeah you don't really like me (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the turn. So they're both totally into each other by mm-hmm. the time that they're in the tent, and then there's this completely weak turn. Yeah, that he's no, no. I, what, what, what am I? A charity? Well, you, you're just doing this because I'm a sad case, and it's it's such a weak. Like you can see the actors kind of like, okay, I gotta sell this. Like, yeah, it's it's just, so on. It's phone such, zoned, and it would have yeah. been fine. Because yeah. then at the end. It, they're still, and then they start. Then they're like kissing and being very affectionate the whole time. Like we assume that they're like together now, but then when they go back to the hotel, they get separate rooms. And like he's like, "Well, I'm going to go back to New York," and she's like, "Well, I'm going to stay." And then there's this whole scene we have to watch. <laughs> we have to watch a whole <laughs> scene of them being like, "Oh, I, uh-uh. I think that you like a guy, but he's too weird for you." and <laughs> yeah, some screenwriting struggles yeah. going on in this one, trying to figure out. I mean, it's, yeah. it's <laughs> tough because you, when you have these two characters who you can, the audience can kind of tell that they just like each other. Yeah. You know, it's like they're, but mm-hmm. they keep, it's it's very written mm-hmm. when they keep putting them into these situations where it's like, okay, we have to have you not like each other for a while and then you can like each other again. Right. And it just, it ended up. It'd be better it was if a they struggle. just like yeah. each other. Yeah, just let it be. Just like each other. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it was very frustrating to be like, why are you making me watch this scene? We know that they are going to get together. Right. They already were together. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but so there's this button at the end where um, they smooch, and she bonks her head. He, yeah, he carries her to the bed, and he puts her down and, and smacks her head into the bed frame. <laughs> Which is how she got her powers the first time, is that she got bonked in the head and then was in a coma. So she, like, bonks her head, and she's like, oh, uh, maybe I'm getting a new spirit guide. And the joke is, it's Peter Falk. <laughs> so, like, do we think Peter Falk is just going to be, like, over her shoulder as her new spirit guide mm-hmm. now? Yeah, watching her shower. Yeah, yeah, that was basically. Uh, creepy, especially yeah. because when when Jeff uh, Goldblum wouldn't sleep with her in the tent, he's like, "Well, what about me? Yeah, I'm <laughs> also here. <laughs> what good would have that done? It would have done me a lot of good." Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Which was funny. I mean, I think this was a funny movie. Like, there yeah. was a lot of laughs. Yeah, I mean, with all the problems we're talking about, there were there were genuine. There was genuine fun and a lot of of cute little fun laughs. Mm-hmm. There were. Yeah, it's it's a fun movie, and I think it it puts Jeff Goldblum in a situation where he's doing the best uh, kind of Jeff Goldblumish performance that he can do. <laughs> yeah. It's mm-hmm. super quirky, very strange kind of, he's got weird line deliveries and I mm-hmm. love it when there's a line delivery that's like, oh, that's such a Jeff Goldblum line delivery. Yeah. Yeah. I just love those. And, yeah. and Cindy Lauper, I mean, she's just great. It's, it's a wonderful cast and mm-hmm. it's one of those ones where you watch it and you're like, if only they found a way to mm-hmm. write this yeah. In a, that that actually could have been something, and mm-hmm. it's uh, it is kind of frustrating. Yeah, but yeah. So th- my recommendation would be if you want to watch a stage with Jeff Goldblum and Cyndi Lauper, kind of being awesome in their own way, then this is a great kind of stage for that. You know, totally. Move, pull, don't come in for the story. Don't come in for the <laughs> plot. <laughs> don't. <laughs> okay, do you guys want to know some trivia? Sure. Okay. So, Cindy Lauper says that she and Jeff Goldblum did not get along. What? Oh, wow. What? Yeah, I know. Can you believe it? They uh, they I don't want that pulled that either. off well because because uh, I thought they had great chemistry actually. Oh. Um, and this also says that Dan Aykroyd was an originally cast in the Jeff Goldblum role, uh, but he dropped out when they cast Cindy Lauper. He didn't. He was. Uh, he did not want to work with Cindy Lauper. Interesting. Mm. Mm. So it's something against her because it's not against like acting with musicians because he's done that plenty. Sure. Huh. Um, and then this says also that uh, the role of Nick was originally written for a very short man. Uh, and so like all of the jokes where she was calling him <laughs> like stretcheroo and like jo- making bit jokes about how tall he is were originally short jokes. Mm. Which if you're going to find someone who's shorter than Cindy Lauper, <laughs> who are you casting in that role? <laughs> Although, weirdly, Peter Falk and her were, like, exactly the same height. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, yeah, so I don't know. Like, <laughs> I do find that weird that it says that she did not get along with Jeff Goldblum. It's kind of sad. But I, I, and I, I also think like it's funny that like I, they wrote I, a bunch yeah. of short jokes. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the I, I wonder if did. it was just yeah. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum didn't get along with Cindy Lauper. Mm. I feel like Jeff Goldblum gets along with everybody. Yeah, that's what I feel. I You're, mean, we're not blaming Cindy. <laughs> I'm blaming Ken, Obviously Ken Quapas, the director. I'm sure it actually all fell on him. Maybe he, <laughs> I'm cool with that. Maybe he like ma- maybe behind the scenes he was like manufacturing reasons for them to like. Oh, Cindy said she didn't like you, and <laughs> so that they would have more like tension between them, and mm-hmm. and it was all a ruse. Hey, I've just I've just I'll go with that. that. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I I think that we should call it that. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> because I refuse to believe that the two of them wouldn't. <laughs> so we can cut that out of the other. episode because we just said only watch this movie to watch these two people together. However, just bear in mind that they did well, not get along. Well, except I think that that's like um, you find that out a lot about like people who have great like chemistry on screen that mm-hmm. like hate each other like in real life and I, I feel like that was like a big cliche of the 80s kind of right like Sybil Shepard not getting along with people like really and truly not just on moonlighting like no one wanting to work with her am I making that up or is that <laughs> something recall. that we know but I think it's something that I, there are plenty of examples of that mm-hmm. through through film history that you could probably pull out where you know there's stars they get a little uh, it's a bunch of peacocks. They don't like each other. <laughs> they have to be in love on screen, and then they don't like each other off screen. That's what acting's all about. I guess. <laughs> I mean, you know, what, what one of the things is want, that I there's so much tension and stress, and there's also so much like vulnerability and ego wrapped up with it. You know, mm-hmm. no one who's totally sane and normal gets into the movie business, anyways. Okay. <laughs> 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 all right. All right. Cool. I, that's not an. That's not making it an excuse um, for bad behavior, obviously. But that's just like anyone who's like rational or reasonable gets a normal job that has steady hours and, and health benefits. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. These we're all uh, driven by the creative, mm-hmm. by the psychic pyramid of exactly. creative energy. Yeah, we're all a little weird. That's definitely true. Um, okay, so like on a scale of one, one vibe, <laughs> <laughs> one vibe, one bar. Do you rate vibes in bars? Is it like how many bars of vibes did you feel? How many vibes? Um, on a scale of one to ten, I don't know. I feel like this is going to be really hard to rate based on that metric. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. What do you think, Andy? Out of out of ten, mm-hmm. you know, I, it's it's uh, it's one of those films that the story is a real struggle, but it was an enjoyable watch, and, oh, and so I have to look at it that way. And so I'd still like probably rank it a six. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it, it's nothing that I I think is great filmmaking or great storytelling. I think it needed a lot of work, but I just I really enjoyed the characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for that, that's probably giving it at least a couple extra stars in there. Extra extra vibes. Extra vibes. <laughs> <laughs> so many vibes. Also, why I like I feel calling it vibes was a mistake. Right. <laughs> I feel like it was a very '80s thing to to mm-hmm. do something vibes. You know, like that whole. But they know. only ever even call it that once. Did they even call it once? Yeah, th- at some I'm point. some vibes. Yeah, oh, something sure, like that. Oh, yeah. do your thing and get your vibes off it like you right, do. Right. The, the oh, the, head the, of the mummy. Museum right, the, guy. Oh, the yeah, mummy the guy, guy yes. talking, Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What do, you, do you think there's a better title? Not for that movie. <laughs> I just don't like vibes. I think vibes is. I like the title. You do? I, it's just, it's a title that sticks. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about it that well, it's doesn't not work like for me. Th- it not it's not like it deserves a better title. <laughs> <laughs> they should call it Vibing the Vibe, Pyramid. Vibing the Cube. Vibing the Cube, <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, vibing the Cube that's turned on its side and is, and is in fact a pyramid. All right, what do you think? Uh, did we land on six? That's, that's where I am. Okay. Right, so I'm going to give it a 5.4 vibes. 
Five point four. Five point four. Very, very specific. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was feeling. I, <laughs> I couldn't. I, I didn't. It was definitely not a five point two. No. Okay. So I had to go higher at five five point four. But it's no five point five. No, obviously not. Obviously not. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I. I mean, you know, ultimately, like the story is like a three. And then, like the 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 actors are kind of like a seven, yeah. and so it kind of turns into a. So five, you're bringing it down points. in the middle. Yeah. Put okay. Well, I will also add that the costumes and the hair. Oh yeah. Make <laughs> it up at least two more notches. Oh just yeah, we haven't even meant. Yeah, well, no, we mentioned it, but yeah, th- it's it. Cindy Lauper has like nine costume changes. She changes clothes constantly in the jungle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we should mention there was a coat. Like right at the beginning of the movie, that you instantly fell in love with. Oh, it was so. like, and it's the the uh, the dumpy psychic or the one who maybe was German. Right, Ingo. Mm-hmm. Ingo yeah. is wearing this jacket that like is very fitted at the waist, and then it's all shoulders on top, but it was also dark earth tone plaids. <laughs> <laughs> it was so great. It looked it looked like it was out of Buckaroo Banzai. Yeah, it was pretty. Steve was sent me had a great jacket too. He also had yeah. a yeah. huge purple jacket. Everybody looked fantastic, with the exception of Peter Falk, who he just looked it. like he was. He didn't even have wardrobe. He just wore whatever <laughs> he was wearing, possibly. He had a great hat. I liked his hat. He did have a great hat, uh, and uh, like just her. Her hair and stuff, and how how cute she is, and how great she looks. I give it a seven. I like it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and what? Okay. Do you think that there would be any opportunity to like remake this movie? And who who do you think would be right for it if we were to redo it? I want them. Forget a remake. I want a sequel. And I want them to bring these two back. Uh I want to hear stories about all the onset bickering. (laughs) But I want that magic. Yeah. That Goldblum Lopper magic. Yes. They just need to to find some better writers. Yeah. uh, You know, but they can do that. They could do that. Yeah. Or I also think that they could go back and like do that thing where someone just re-edits the movie. Like someone who's, uh, you know, (laughs) like just re-edits what's already there and makes it better. Snappier. How long? What's the running time? Do we know? Uh, it was ninety nine minutes. <laughs> Ooh. Ninety nine minutes of vibes. Ninety nine yeah. minutes of vibes. <laughs> yeah, I think we we're needing like a sixty five minute version. Oh wow, that's seventy is that minutes. Even, is that even is sixty five minutes so even considered se- theatrical? It's, as long as it's over sixty. Really? Uh, well, it's fe- it gets considered feature length. Fe- I don't know if it would, that's what I it would consider a maybe seventy. 70. Yeah. It's been written down. Nathan's okay. going to do it. He's, he's, gonna <laughs> he's, he's it. making the cut. Oof. That's not enough. I think that you could, like, I think that you could do this with somebody who's, like, a Michael Sarah type and, like, some sort of cute Disney girl who, like, is known mm-hmm. for being a good singer. I also wanted a scene where somehow they get caught in some kind of Ecuadorian pub and they get in trouble with the, the word of foul of the locals <laughs> and she has to, like, sing play the swing piano. and pop Sing tune. her way to freedom. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> Goldblum has to play the piano yeah, right. and she has to sing a song just they, right out of Adventures from Babysitting, <laughs> right, in order uh-huh. to get them out of that situation. <laughs> Right, like in the Marx Brothers, it's like, oh wow, he found a harp in this movie too. Yeah. <laughs> he better play. How does he, he keep play? doing that? Right. <laughs> yeah, that was. I, you know, I mean, she did sing the little German lullaby mm-hmm. to Ingo. So, and it was beautiful. And I <laughs> was like, no, I want her to sing some more. Right, mm-hmm. not just the end credit song. But yeah, and so the sh- end credit song, which was about China or right, something, yeah, yeah. I didn't understand. I didn't get it. And they ran out of money at that point to have someone write a song. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> about <laughs> Um, okay, do you have a, and I realize it might be a little bit trickier because we just watched the movie, so, I mean, Andy probably had time to think of it, except he forgot he was supposed to think oh. of a deep cut <laughs> recommendation. <laughs> right. Um, but I have at least, at least three that I could think of, and I don't know, I don't know which one is best. I think Can the most I borrow b- one? <laughs> yes. Um, well, and one that we should all three recommend is an event that we will all be at at the end of May here in uh, the Arizona area, mm. the greater Arizona area, uh, which is Phoenix Fan Fusion, where Jeff Goldblum will be appearing. What? Yeah. Sweet. 
I think we should all go in on a photo op. <laughs> just the three of us. I think we great. need to push this sequel idea. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We're going to be like, yes, yes, yes. Picture is great, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Bobo, yeah, but we, we would we, like we, to see we we're pitching. We're here to pitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, but we'll be we'll all be there doing panels. And we're doing panel together sometime That's on right. Sunday. Look it up. I don't know what the title is or the time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you there. <laughs> we'll all be there. Um, but yeah, come for Jeff Goldblum. Stay for all the panels that we'll be participating mm-hmm. in. Yep. I'll put it on the website once we know when. I'll put it on the Facebook and the um, Instagram. I will. Stop looking at me like I won't, Nathan. <laughs> I'm agreeing with you. Okay. <laughs> Why do you think everyone's your enemy? <laughs> I don't know. I went to the paranoia campus that was next to the... I was trying next to find to the, the psychic. <laughs> next to the paranormal. Well, you failed both. <laughs> I did. I screwed up. The three-card Monty guy out front confused me. Um, I also think this reminded me of... Transylvania 6 5000. Oh, that I was going to give that one as one of my deep cuts. Oh, well, well wow. please take it. No, it's a, it's a very Jeff Goldblumy movie. Mm-hmm. He and Ed Begley Jr. and it I don't know. I still I still think of that one sometimes. Yes. Uh, usually it's when I see people climbing over walls. Uh-huh. That's a, <laughs> it always thinks about, someone tried to get in, someone tried to get in. <laughs> I don't know. I I really love it, but I I I think my deep cut recommendations would be very Jeff Goldblumy types yeah. of things and this is one of them because mm-hmm. he is very Jeff Gold, Goldblumy in that movie. Yeah. I haven't seen it in ages. It might not hold up. But I am curious about it because I really did love it at the we time. We should definitely put that on the list of movies that we're going be to watch and review list, yeah. because I have also not seen it since I was a kid. But I remember really liking it. Yeah. But also knowing that it was no good. <laughs> <laughs> but liking it anyway. <laughs> and I think that's where he he ended up hooking up with Gina Davis and kind of starting there. Yeah, she's a vampire. She's, she's the sexy yeah, vampire. Right, yeah. Um, and also. Kramer's in it. What is his real name? Michael Richards. Is that right? He's like a butler. Uh, I don't remember who he was in it, mm. um, but I, I mean Jeffrey Jones is in it. Carol Kane. Um, yeah. But Maybe Norm, Norman Fell pops up in it. Oh, I, I I really should watch that one again because I'm yeah. curious about it. Okay, we're gonna put that one on the uh, radar. It just the IMDb rating for that one is even lower than Vibes. No! Just saying. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that makes it better. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember having a fun time watching that movie and like forcing friends to watch it when they would come over. <laughs> You're going to like it. And then they'd be like, okay, Chrissy. <laughs> Whatever We're you We're not say. friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was quick. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, did you think of one, Nathan Blackwell? Romancing the Stone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what a perfect recommendation. In fact, everybody should run right out and go watch Romancing the Stone right now because you won't be able to watch Vibes. <laughs> um, because that's our next movie. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Uh, and Adam Rini is coming back. Uh, he wants to. Okay. Tune in. <laughs> to see if he shows up. Find out then. Yes. Um... <laughs> All right. Well, I, I had at least one more. I don't know, you know, I think it was just going to re- nope, recommend, oh, going to karaoke and singing Cindy Lauper songs. Hey, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll really lift your spirits. She's got some good songs She's to sing. Great yeah. songs. Yeah. Some of them are kind of hard to sing. Kind of like how Blondie sings. Like it seems like it's going to be really easy to sing. And then it's like, <laughs> it's actually pretty hard. But uh, go with Shebop. Can't lose with Shebop. Or time after time. There's a good one. All right. I think um, Billy Idol and Cindy Lauper should have teamed up in a movie. <gasps> yes, that maybe they crazy. did, and it's just we and it is even more lost. <laughs> and they more <laughs> even couldn't get along with each other. Right, exactly. <laughs> maybe she's just a monster, <laughs> and that whole <laughs> that whole true colors thing is just an act. <laughs> right. No, I don't believe it for a second. Um, what's where can people go to find the next real podcast and the Marvel Movie Minute? People can head over to uh, thenextreel.com and they can learn all about our podcast and see all the different movies and and shows that we've done. We just hit uh, 400 uh, episodes wow. on that show. I nice. know. Congratulations. Holy cow. And then the Marvel Movie Minute, they can go to marvelmovieminute.com and, and check out uh, that. We're looking at the... Films of the Marvel Cinematic Universe one minute at a time, starting with Iron Man, which 
we're uh, we're in, in <laughs> we're you know minute seventy seven <laughs> right now. So slowly but surely cranking our way through that movie, and then uh, Incredible Hulk uh, next year. So yay! Yes. Yeah. So, but you can find all the social media links and all that on those pages. Wonderful. We'll put the link as well in our uh, episode post, which is on mostexcellentpod.com. Um, and of course, find the most excellent Facebook group and the Instagram and all the things mm-hmm. that are. And out thanks there. for listening. Yeah. I've never said that. Thank you. Yeah. Wait. I really appreciate you in specific. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I'm talking to. <laughs> Tell them to give us a review. That's okay. <laughs> I still love you. <laughs> yeah. I uh, this movie poster is another thing that weirdly always sticks with me. Really? Yeah. I I, I don't even think I got to see it. There oh yeah. Uh huh. Oh, it looks like they're in jail. No, it's just a picture of each of them, and this says, "Put your hands on our hands and feel the vibes." vibes. Wow. The psychic comedy that's out of its mind. Uh, nice. If that doesn't sell it, well, apparently it didn't. It didn't. Yeah. Well, did they, was there a good line in the movie? I was the captain of the machine gun team <laughs> <laughs> in high school. That was a good bit. Yeah. That was a really good line. Mm-hmm. That was a killer line. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, firm. That's my calculator. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of good lines. It was very funny. Uh, All right. Well, thank you for listening. Um, We can't wait to see you next time with Romancing the Stone. Thank you for being back with us again, Andy. I'm thrilled. Thrilled to join. We'll be back for Transylvania (laughs) 65000 any day now. Um, And hey, uh, while you're out there in the world, remember to keep the most excellent 80s movies podcast motto in mind. Be excellent to each other. And party on, dudes. We couldn't think of anything better. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.